it's more internal. It's more, if I show up for my family, if I show up for my faith, if I show up for myself today, then it's a successful day. And then I can try again tomorrow. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today, we have an inspiring episode for you with a guest whom I really admire. She is someone who inspires millions of lives through her platforms, and I'm excited to have her on the show today. So we cover a range of topics, including living a purposeful and mindful life, navigating life's highs and lows, lessons from motherhood, and how to do it all, balancing parenting, career, and self-care. Our guest today is Joyce Pring Trevino. Joyce Pring Trevino. Trevino is a TV presenter, podcast host, keynote speaker, and world vision ambassador, host of the number one self-improvement podcast in the Philippines, Adulting with Joyce Pring. She's impacted millions of lives through her platforms and continues to create substantial content with the aim of inspiring, educating, and encouraging her audience. She is a follower of Christ and loves serving her family as a wife to Juancho and mom to Eliam and Aggie. Hello, Joyce. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. How are you feeling today? I'm so excited. I cannot believe that I'm on this other side where I get to be <laughs> interviewed by you after watching so much of your content for the past few years. It's an honor to be here. So thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for being here. You are amazing. And for the listeners who don't know, I was just on Joyce's podcast, Adulting with Joyce Pring. So it's fun to do this like the other way around. Okay, so to get started, why don't you tell us your story in how you became this influencer media personality around self-improvement in the Philippines? My goodness. You know, I started when I was 18. And the funny thing was, I initially was working on TV. So I was a TV host. I was a music video jockey in the Philippines. And my start was really in the Philippines. You know, it, it, in TV, it was the classic, you get into an audition and then you get a TV show. And that's where I started. But funnily enough, I didn't really get any traction until I got into social media in 2011 or 2012. Oh, wow. So, you know, in the Philippines, TV is big, but for some reason, it's very cliquish. So if you don't belong to like a showbiz clan or I guess anywhere in, in the world, right, with showbiz, it's always like that. So I never really found my footing on TV. And I always found it weird that I had to follow all these arbitrary rules of how to become somebody of influence. And then I discovered... YouTube and also Instagram. And I started posting on there and a lot of people related to the content that I was creating, which was really, really fun. I had no idea with branding and things like that. I just, I just wanted to have fun on the internet. And so what was the, the content back then? Like when you just started, <laughs> I started creating, um, song covers. Oh which my gosh. I, I did too. You never stumble <laughs> on because you're actually oh really God. good. You know what's funny is like being a TV host was like my dream job. One of my dream jobs at that time when I was like young and pursuing like entertainment. So the fact that you did that, it's, I see a lot of similarities in our path. Yeah, that's why when, when, <laughs> when you came onto my podcast, I was like, our paths are super similar. We went through so many same things, but like in yeah. different ways. Yeah. And yeah, so mine just was different. Like I started with TV hosting, you did mm -hmm. a, a TV show, but with singing, right? Right. And I I loved it, but I didn't really get enough attention. And the funny thing was, finally, after being on social media in 2012 to 2013, I got a lot of traction from there. I started getting more offers on TV and on radio. And so I did that for a couple of years and I was doing social media content creation, influencer stuff simultaneously while I was doing radio and also TV. So it was really a hectic 20s, early 20s. That's yeah. why when you were talking about that, I felt so seen because that's exactly what I went through as well. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was trying out all these different things that was pulling me towards things that I was passionate about, things I was enjoying and, you know, working with people that I actually really loved. Right. And at what point did like self-improvement kind of weave into your brand? Because in the beginning, it was just like fun lifestyle, right? Yeah. So the self-improvement came 2018 when I, when I turned 25 and I had a 
quarter life crisis of some sort, if you will. Tell me about it. What happened? <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Um, I spent, it was, it started with boy problems and then it transitioned into family problems and then like career problems. I just felt so lost. So I was in this relationship for three and a half years and it was so confusing at that time. And, you know, when you're in your early 20s, you kind of get into these relationships thinking that it's just for fun. And then somewhere in the middle, you find yourself falling in love deeply and wanting more, but then the other person didn't want anything more. And I just found myself constantly confused and having a difficult time. And then after that, oh, simultaneously with that, I was having issues and problems with my family and kind of outgrowing and going into this level of independence that my parents didn't really understand. And then going into this confusing time of my career where I didn't know if I wanted to continue TV or radio or just do influencer stuff full time. And I realized that in the Philippines, there wasn't anybody that would talk about all these adulting issues that we would have, which is how do you handle relationships? How do you move on from heartbreak? How do you become a better person? How do you become more empathetic? How do you navigate changes in your career? Like how do you start over? And I always found content from you guys in the States. Like I would watch your content already a few years ago and many other people like Tony Robbins and they really inspired me, but it didn't speak to the culture and the context that I was in. So I just started adulting with Joy Spring as kind of like a diary of what I was going through and what I was learning. And the first episode that I did was things to stop doing in your 20s because that's what I was going through. Like I figured out, okay, I need to stop gossiping. I need to stop drinking excessively. I need to stop being too hard on myself, et cetera, et cetera. And it just surprised me that a lot of young people related to it because I guess we were all going through it, but nobody was really speaking to us about it. So that's how it initially started. All right, let's take a break for our sponsor, Mosh. Life can be a whirlwind. With our busy schedules and endless to-dos, it's often a challenge to stay healthy when we want to reach for a tasty snack. Enter Mosh, the brain-boosting protein bar. Mosh is no ordinary protein bar. It's designed with your brain and body in mind. With six delicious flavors, each Mosh bar includes 12 grams of protein and is made with ingredients that support brain health like ashwagandha, lion's mane, collagen, and omega-3s. At only 160 calories with just one gram of sugar, Mosh is the guilt-free snack your brain and body will thank you for. Plus, these bars were mindfully crafted by top neuroscientists and functional nutritionists, so you know you're getting the best of the best. My personal favorite flavor is the cookie dough crunch. It's satisfies my sweet tooth without the guilt. Mosh protein bars will keep your brain and body fit, fueled, and feeling good. Head to moshlife.com slash TLL to save 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack. That's 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack, which includes all six mouthwatering flavors. M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E dot com slash TLL. I love that so much. Again, I see, I feel like related to that because I also didn't see people talking about it, talking about these topics on YouTube. And that's what inspired me to talk about it. Well, when you started your podcast, I mean, what was the initial reaction? Was it already like, like it grew really fast because people loved it? What was that journey like? No, it it really started out as a passion project and we had a couple of hundred listeners on the podcast. And funnily enough, Spotify was just starting out in the Philippines that time or or Spotify podcasts was just starting out in the Philippines. So I was always number one in the Philippines. Oh my gosh, great. Nobody else was there. So I was like, yeah. yes, the number one podcast in the Philippines, but only really, I think, because... I was one of the few who oh. was consistently creating content. And at some point, you know, if you listen to my former episodes, I would have episodes that go like, all right, guys, I'm not sure if I'm going to be uploading next week because this is a passion <laughs> project. I don't want to put any pressure on myself. But eventually when people started messaging me about how the episodes were affecting them, how it was offering a different perspective for them or encouraging them in their day-to-day -day struggles, battles, and growth, 
it encouraged me to really create more consistently because I felt like I wasn't just creating as an outlet for myself, which is how it started, but I was eventually creating to inspire and encourage others as well who were journeying with me, not because I was specifically more wise than them because I was just as clueless, but because I had this platform that people were already following me and I figured out already how to create content that would, I guess, help people understand what they're also going through. Mm, I love that so much. And during this point in your life where you already talk, like thinking about purpose and living a purposeful life, because I know your brand is all about that. So tell me about your journey in finding your purpose. I guess it's still ongoing. I'll start with that. It's still ongoing. So I was 23 when I felt like I had figured it all out. You know, I come from a poor family, Eileen. So I didn't, I haven't even finished college until now. I haven't finished college because when I was in college, my parents couldn't afford to put me through college anymore. That's why I started working in TV and showbiz because in the Philippines, you'll find that a lot of celebrities or TV personalities would go into television because that's a lucrative career here in the Philippines. And I never really got to finish college. So my purpose at that time was always, okay, I needed to make money so that I can put my brother through school, my younger brother through school, and I could help my parents out and my grandparents to kind of have a more comfortable life. And when I was 23, I started working at 18 or 17. And when I was 23, I reached all of that. You know, I reached a successful career in my standard. I reached, I was in a happy relationship before the breakup when I was 25. I had achieved everything that I thought would give me happiness and purpose. But for some reason, it just, it didn't fulfill anything in me. And I just felt discontent in my heart. And, you know, that's really when I got to go to church. That's when I got to know God. That's had. That's when I had this revival in my faith and my relationship with Jesus. And I found a purpose in him and in what he's created, what he's called me to do, which is really to serve others and love others and use the talents, the times and the treasures that he's given me to help other people as well. And I think with anything, any young person always struggles with the idea of purpose, right? Like, what am I doing here for? Like, what's the purpose and the point of this all? When somebody's always going to be smarter, prettier, more privileged, have better opportunities than I I have, what's the purpose? Like, what's the point of me even hustling if somebody's always going to be better than me? And I think once you realize that you're called for something greater, you're called to do something great in your life, and to serve others and to love others and to glorify God, to me, that gave me so much hope and so much peace. And I want other people to realize that as well, that you're called for something bigger, not just this arbitrary image of success and being able to achieve your dreams, but be able to serve and help other people as well in that journey. So I think it's that, and it's constantly changed. Like, I feel like the mission has always been the same, but the vision changes, right? Like according to your season of life, it changes rapidly depending on what you're going through and what's needed from you. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask this later on, but I think it's good to bring it up now. Why don't you tell us about what success meant for you back then? And then how has it evolved? What does success mean now? Success at the very beginning for me was covered in this ideology that I was doing it for my family and the people that I loved. But in reality, it was just an ego thing for me because I wanted to prove to myself that I was better than this poor girl that came from Manila that had, that had not finished college, that had nothing to show up for. I was just trying to prove myself wrong and prove others wrong and show other people that, hey, I can be better. I can be successful. I can have a lot of money. I can have a lucrative career. I can travel the world. I can do all of these amazing things and I'll be happy. That for me was my image of success. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. What I was saying for me, it was a bad thing because my heart intention was wrong. Then eventually when I got everything that I thought I wanted and still felt that emptiness, I realized that success for me should never be something that ends in me. It should never be something that just ends in what I 
what makes me happy. You know, if it doesn't translate to you contributing to the bigger picture, which is really helping people, serving people, loving people, encouraging them, being a part of their journey, mentoring them, it just wasn't worth it because it's, there's always something going to be, there's always something that I would want to achieve still. Like there's always a bigger prize. Like you get this prize of one small thing and then you want the bigger thing and the bigger thing and the bigger thing. You get the condo, you want the house. You get the house, you want the bigger house. It's always going to be like that. So unless you realize that you are called for something bigger and you need to find contentment and create contentment rather than constantly look for it in getting these prizes and these small achievements, then it's going to constantly be like that. It's just a an, an never-ending cycle. So I feel like right now it's also changing now that, I'm become, that, that, that I'm a mom and I've become a wife and I'm creating a family. Because for me at that time, it was always, okay, success means showing up for my followers, showing up for the people that I co- create content for. But now it's like, I need to show up for my family more. I need to show up for my son and my daughter. I need to be a better person so that the woman that they see at home is the same woman that is, you know, seen on TV or on content creation stuff. Because if I'm not genuinely a good person at home, then success, I'm not successful because my, my kids will see that my husband will see that. So I guess it, it, it changes, right? It changes throughout time. How about you? How do you see success? Yeah. I, I want to know, like, what's success for you now? Well, I I think I mentioned this on your podcast that I just define success now as me living a life that feels joyful and aligned to my authentic self and my what I'm meant to be doing, right? As long as I feel aligned, like everything is like who I am inside, who I am outside, what I'm doing, it all feels aligned. <laughs> that is success. Like, as long as my life is fulfilling for me and it doesn't have to look good, it doesn't have to look successful on the outside, it's about the joy and fulfillment I feel inside. So there can be times where I like I don't have to post as consistently as I used to or do you know what I mean? Like I don't have to put myself to the the pressures that I used to to like perform or show up or even be productive. Like success can it's more of an internal feeling for me. Yeah, I, I I relate to that so much. I think it's also that for me, like my content schedule used to be so filled with everything. Like it has to be aligned to the branding. It has to constantly be there. If I miss one day, I feel so guilty that I wasn't productive for one day. But you're right. It It's shifting now also. Like it's more internal. It's more if I show up for my family, if I show up for my faith, if I show up for myself today, then it's a successful day. And then I can try again tomorrow. Oh, another way I like to put my success is, uh, success is like me feeling at peace, <laughs> right? Anything that takes away my peace, like it's not successful. Like no matter how much money I make, if I'm being stressed and if my mental health is not good, that's not successful, right? Yeah. Like I, yeah, now I prioritize like my inner peace. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And, and mm-hmm. I think it's, it's something that we're learning I felt I feel like we've all learned that during our late twenties, where mm-hmm. you realize that you have to protect your peace. Apparently, peace doesn't just come. Like you think that peace is just something that comes in your life or seasons of peace, but in reality, you have to be proactive in protecting your peace because there are constantly different aspects of life that is constantly trying to steal your peace and steal your joy. So my next question for you is how do you set goals or formulate goals now that you have this new version of success? Like it seems like it's, it comes from somewhere deeper, right? You're here to serve, you're here to do good. So how does that change like the way you approach life and goals? I think it's an everyday thing. You know, the most important thing that I've realized that has affected the way that I live my life it's not anything grand. It's something so simple. It's being mindful of what I am intaking. And that literally means everything that I am taking in. 
whether it's the books that I'm reading, the podcasts that I'm listening to, the devotions that I'm doing for my Bible, the time I'm spending with people, the food that I'm I'm eating. I realize that the simple act of being mindful of what you're putting inside your body, your mind, and your spirit, being mindful of that changes your entire life. Because I think, I was reading this thing that said, your brain tries to conserve energy as much as possible. And so if you're not being mindful of what you're eating and you're watching something while you're eating, your brain doesn't re- even realize that you're already full because it's spending its energy on what you're watching instead of what you're eating. And so that made me think that, okay, if my brain is always trying to conserve energy, that means that I'm doing a lot of automated things that I didn't even know I was doing. So that means I'm scrolling too much on social media. I didn't even know I was gossiping with people. I didn't even know I was doing all of these other things. And the moment that I made that tiny switch of, I'm going to start being mindful of what I'm doing. What am I drinking? What am I listening to? What am I reading? Then it just, it changed everything for me. It's this tiny change that really happened. And I think it's committing to that. It's committing to that small step of being mindful, but also committing to this idea that, okay, if I'm getting blessings today, if I'm getting blessings in my life today, what is one way that I can give back? Apart from being grateful and having gratitude in my heart and really taking into account all these blessings that I'm getting, what's one way that I can give back today? What's one way that I can serve today? And I haven't done this uh religiously, but I remember a mentor of mine would always say like, maybe you can ask before you start doing something for yourself in one day, if you're done with, you know, taking care of yourself, doing your journaling and things like that, the next thing that you can do is to then actively ask, okay, how can I be of help to you today, to my husband or to my kids, or even to the people that I live with in our house? So it's those small things. I, I feel like, you know, with self-improvement, a lot of people think that it's always the grand, wake up at 4.30 in the morning and do the grind and work out. But in reality, it's the small habits and small ways that we live our lives that compound to have the grandest effect. Oh, definitely. Um, tell us more about that because I know people love hearing about habits and routines. So what are the things that you always try to do to keep yourself like grounded or just, you know, to keep yourself Girl, I'm right? I'm scheduled. I am scheduled. <laughs> tell us about it. Scheduled. How? Yeah. What is your lifestyle? What do you do every day, every week? Wow. Um, everything is scheduled for me. Wow. And a lot of people would think that if everything is scheduled, then you have no time to be free and to do things spontaneously. But I've realized that if you don't have structure and schedule in your life, then the more that you don't get to do anything fun or spontaneous. So for example, with my work stuff, uh, people don't realize that I only work pretty much like twice a week. That's all I do. Like I spend two full days shooting and creating content and writing and doing all the stuff that I need to do for my content creation and for my show in two to three days. And then the rest of the week, I am taking care of my kids full time. Like they don't have nannies. I fully take care of them. I breastfeed my baby. Oh, you know, oh my, 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 my eldest is still here with us. He's two years old. Like he's just playing at home. I'm homeschooling him. And so I have to schedule that. So What I do, for example, for content creation, for content buckets, I would have my team come to the house one day. They sleep. We shoot the entire day. They sleep over. And then the next day, we shoot the entire day again. And that's like two full months of content. Oh my gosh. Wow. You're very... You just packed it in. That's amazing. (laughs) So I try to do that so that if I create content in between of really how my life is, it's no longer pressure for me. Mm -hmm. I realized that by creating that scheduled content creation shoots, I can do content and create stuff for fun throughout the day or throughout the week without having the pressure like, oh, I need to edit this so I can post it so that I have this. So I do that. And then I follow a strict morning routine with my family and also a strict nighttime routine. And I've applied that with my kids. And, you know, of course, it's not like a military thing where they get punished or I get punished if we don't do this. But it's just the structure that we try to follow as 
religiously as possible as much as we can. And I've seen how my family is thriving because of that. Yeah, tell us about the morning and evening routine. So in the morning, my family usually wakes up at 5.30 or 6 in the morning, only because we have kids. Trust me, if I didn't have kids, I'd probably wake up at 8. Yeah. <laughs> so no pressure. If you don't have kids, you don't have to wake up at 6 or 5.30. So we wake up. The first thing that we do is we go for a walk. So we live in a nice suburban place. So we go for like a 30 minute to one hour walk. And then after that, we have our breakfast together. We have our coffee, our daily devotion, and our journaling together. I've done this thing when... You know, you talked about this on the podcast where you journal a lot and it was something that you had to get back to, right? And it's also something that I'm getting back to now. I used to write so much on my journals, but now I'm only doing like one to two sentences because that's all the time that I have. So as long as I get to do that, then I'm fine. After we do our journal and our breakfast and our devotions, my son and I would often go to the living room. We do homeschooling for 20 minutes. He's only two. So we do like lessons for the day and then I breastfeed. And then, you know, you'll be surprised it's 11 a.m. already and they have to go yeah. for their first nap of the day. So that's how our morning is. And then the rest wow. of the day kind of is loose, loose, whatever right. needs to happen. It happens throughout there. And then at night, it's the same thing. By 5.30 or 6, my my kids already have their dinner. And then I put them for a bath. And then we go for books and then sleep. And they're down by 7 p.m. Okay, nice. And then after 7 p.m., like, do you have your own evening routine for your own for yourself? Oh, yes. Girl. <laughs> like what happens? That, <laughs> that's when the reading or the podcasting, listening nice. or the having dinner and... Mm relaxing happens. Mm -hmm. You know, what I've realized, and this is coming from someone, I have to add a caveat. This is coming from someone that used to struggle a lot with scheduling and time management. And this is coming from someone that experienced a deep bout of depression after her first child. And it was a hard lesson to learn because I thought that by constantly giving my all to my child and to my husband. I thought that that was going to bring me happiness, joy, and fulfillment. But I realized that from what we were talking about on the podcast as well, it's so important to also set aside time for yourself to work out, to read books, to just have fun and enjoy your own company. Because if not, you're going to create this spite in your heart towards the people that you're serving and loving. And so that's why I schedule everything because my kids will do whatever they want for throughout the day and I need to be there for them. But 7 p.m. onwards, that's my time for myself. I can do whatever I like. If I want to go out, if I want to work out, if I want to do something fun, that's my time. And yeah. that time for me is sacred. So mm -hmm. It's well-deserved after a whole <laughs> routine since 5.30 a.m. Wow. Yeah. Let's take another break for our sponsor, Factor. If you're too busy to cook but still want to eat well, look no further than Factor. It's America's top ready-to-eat meal kit with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your doorstep. With Factor, you'll save precious time, nourish your body, and stay right on track with your healthy lifestyle. Factor saves me so much time and effort on food prep. I love that the meals taste good and introduce variety to my everyday meals. I had the jalapeno lime chicken meal yesterday and the vegetarian tamale bowl today. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. You can choose from over 34 weekly flavor packed meals, each with around or fewer than 550 calories per serving. You can also complement your meals with add ons like snacks or cold pressed juices and smoothies. Head to factormeals.com slash TLL50, the number is 50, and use code TLL50 to get 50% off. That's code TLL50 at factormeals.com slash TLL50 to get 50% off. Okay, tell us more about how your perspective on life has changed since being a mom. Like what lessons, what are the biggest lessons you've learned since becoming a mom? So many things. My, so just as a background, my my eldest now is two. He just turned two last July. And my daughter is four months. So I am in the thick of it. And 
some of the lessons that I've been learning as a mom, the first one is our parents really just winged it. You know what I realized? Our parents just really winged it. And we're all just kind of winging it. There is no Bible on how to become a good, responsible adult. And we're just constantly trying to make that decision and those conscious decisions every single day to show up for ourselves and for our family. That's the first one. The second one is that you cannot pour from an empty cup. If you think that the most noble thing that you can do is to serve and love others, then well and good. But you cannot do that if you don't know how to love yourself and care for yourself and show up for yourself as well. I started my motherhood journey thinking that I needed to just serve. I needed to just love. And then I I reached a point where I just hated motherhood. I hated being a mom. And I realized it was because I wasn't even getting a nice shower in. I wasn't eating a nice meal. Like I couldn't even work out. And I felt so guilty showing up for myself. The mom guilt was there thinking that I was being selfish, but self-care is not selfish, especially when you want to show up as your best self to the people that you love. And finally, my children are teaching me to be more carefree more loving, more patient. My son, you become impatient with him. And then the next second after you say sorry, it's like nothing happened. And I want to have the memory of a kid in that way where, you know, when I get hurt or when I'm disappointed, he just constantly resumes the disposition of joy and happiness. So my my kids are teaching me that. My kids are teaching me to slow down, that it's okay to not constantly fill your days with productive stuff. Sometimes we spend our entire day after our morning routine, or even if we don't do our morning routine, we just blow bubbles. That's all we do. We play with water, we blow bubbles. And I realized that there is joy in that. The moment that you have the clarity of slowing down and just being mindful of the world around you, you'll real you'll realize that there's so much for you to learn and to gain just by being present. Yeah. I like I want to get into this like because it sounds like you you've shifted and you're learning to slow down because I on one hand you're so like productive and you're so good at like you know batching that's every and other week I leave. <laughs> The, the shoot okay. is every other week. Okay. I just need to remind everybody. Well, well, it just brings up the topic of like, you are sh- such a powerhouse, right? You're like this career woman, but you're also this mother, right? Yeah, and, and it's it's balancing that fast pace, trying to, you know, obviously you still have your career, but then you also have your family. So how do you balance those those two paths. And because I know a lot of women out there are struggling with the same thing. Yeah. Well, I want to say first and foremost, that the most important thing that I have right now is an incredible support system. And I know that's a privilege that not a lot of women have, but if you can, that's the first thing that you need to find. My husband is the most supportive person in my life. And he set up this we are in our bedroom because the babies are downstairs. So I had to record here. Mm-hmm. And he set this whole thing up and I, I was just doing my makeup. And I realized that, you know, I get to do a lot of the things that I want to do because my husband is so supportive. And so a support system is the number one thing that you need. If you have people in your life to help you, be open to ask for help because that's really what will enable you to do all the other stuff that you need to do. That's the first one. The second one is really knowing my priorities, having a clear vision in my head of what my priorities are and who my priorities are. So for me, it's this, it's my faith in God, it's my husband, it's my children, and then career is just on the fourth. And as long as I know that I'm going through my priorities and it's not tipping on different scales, then I'm fine. Like just having a clear vision of my priorities keeps me on track. But third, I want to say also that it won't always be like that. There will be days when it's going to be hard and you have to prioritize your kids over your husband or your career over your kids when the time calls for it. But as long as it's not overwhelmingly that case every single time, then you'll be fine. I think 
oftentimes we, a lot of career women and also moms who are working, the pressure on us is so, so hard because it's either you stay home full time or you work full time. It's always the zero or nothing, uh, zero or 100, right? But I think If you find that balance wherein you know in your heart that you are keeping your priorities in check and you aren't doing things, spreading yourself too thinly, then I I feel like you'll be fine. But that's something that's really between you and God, between you and your family, between you and work that you'll have to figure out on your own. And I'm saying this as somebody who's still in the process of realizing that, of learning that, of practicing that. It's constantly the practice of balance that keeps you going. Yeah. Lastly, I, I want to say that a friend of mine used to say this to me. She said, how do you ride a bike? You just keep going. Because if you stop, then that's when you tip on one side or fall on the other side. So if you want to keep the balance in your life, it's not about thinking about balance. It's practicing that balance and continuously riding and pedaling the bike. I love that. Do you believe that women can have it all? Can can we, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Have the career, have the family, be good at everything. What is your stance on that? Yeah, I, I absolutely think so. But I also want to say with encouragement that we can have it all, but not all at once. And there are certain seasons in your life where you have to realize that it's okay to not have it all at once. It doesn't mean that you don't have it all at all. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Um, when I just gave birth with my to my daughter, I felt like I wasn't doing anything for my career. I wasn't going out for hostings. I wasn't doing any content creation for branded stuff. Nothing. But I realized that it was just a season. After four months, I'm now fully back in swing. I'm going back to work. I'm doing events. I'm doing podcast guestings and things like that. And the moment that you realize that life comes in seasons, that's when the pressure kind of dwindles down. Because you won't feel too much sadness or pressure when you're not doing anything. Or you won't feel too much pressure when you're actually in the thick of it and super busy because you realize that it's it's just a season. Yeah. We have a saying in the Philippines, how do I phrase this? So I'll just say it in Tagalog first and then I'll explain it to yes. you. It says, when you're going through something, pag may pinagdadaanan ka, daanan mo lang. Wag, mong, wag kang magsistay doon. So basically what it's saying is, if you're going through something, just go through it. Don't stay there. Oftentimes when we're going through something, we think I'm staying here. This is who I am. This is where I am. But in reality, you're just going through it. You're passing through. It's a season of your life that you're passing through. It's not a definitive season of your life where this is who I am. This is what I'll be for the rest of my life. Yeah. I think that's really helpful. Just a great reminder, even for me to hear too. Cause like when you're going through like a low point, it feels like that's your new reality and you feel like, Oh my God, my life is going to be like this now things have changed, but you forget that we have those highs and lows. Life always goes on. It's always changing. So just keep going. Don't mm. stay there. <laughs> you're not going to stay yeah. there. That's really nice to hear. It's time for a break with our sponsor, One Skin. Are you tired of trying an endless amount of skincare products that all claim to smooth wrinkles and firm skin, but don't really deliver on results? Well, let me introduce One Skin, founded by a team of four female PhD level longevity scientists with over 15 years of experience studying the biology of aging. After testing thousands of peptides, they discovered OS1, a peptide scientifically proven to target aged cells, the main source of skin aging. Their flagship product, OS1 Face, is clinically validated to improve firmness, fine lines, and overall tone and appearance. Wilson and I have both been enjoying their OS1 Face product. It's fragrance-free, absorbs quickly into the skin, and their packaging is reusable and refillable. One Skin is for everyone who wants to prevent or reverse the signs of aging with a groundbreaking approach. They address skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging so skin behaves, feels, and appears younger. It's time for you to experience a new skin health routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with the code TLL at oneskin.co. That's 15% off 
oneskin.co with code TLL. We only have one body, one skin, and only you can choose to make it better. Age healthy with one skin. Okay. So what about when you are unmotivated? Like how do you, you, what is your advice for staying motivated and resilient in the face of like setbacks and challenges and tough times? Wow. I found myself in that position one too many times being unmotivated. Yeah. Like how did you get out of it? Did you like intentionally do anything or was it just the flow of life? My goodness. Well, I've gone through both, right? I've gone through just go with the flow and I've also gone through, I had to zap myself out of it. I guess the first thing that you have to do if you're feeling unmotivated is to ask yourself, why am I here? Why am I in this position where I just don't feel like doing anything productive with my life? Because I think people often don't ask that question. We just like, okay, I need to get out of here. I'm unmotivated. I need to be motivated. You have to first ask yourself, what got you there so that it won't happen again? I realize that oftentimes my being unmotivated came from burnout. I was just doing too much, too much. And I wasn't showing up for myself. I was just working so much. I was scheduling so much. So I get this analysis paralysis of, okay, I have too many things to do. I don't even want to start. So ask yourself, why are you feeling unmotivated? The second is, it's so important to have mentors or even accountability partners to help you process what you're going through. For me, I even have a counselor and a therapist that I talk to, especially when I'm going through seasons of doubt, depression, and unmotivation, wherein I need to process with them, okay, how did I get here and what do I do next? And people who will just encourage you and tell you that, hey, this is something that you can get through and we're here to help you. That's so important. And the third thing would probably be something that I often say on the podcast, I have a saying on the podcast where I say, just force it for five minutes. If you're unmotivated to do anything, you don't want to work, you don't want to work out, you don't want to write, you don't want to do anything, you don't want to see people, just force it for five minutes. And I've realized that after those first five minutes of you just showing up because you have to, not because you want to, your disposition changes once you get into the groove of things. I I think most of us get stuck in being unmotivated because we wait to feel motivated before we do something. But in reality, we often have to do first before we feel. We often have to do productive things first before we feel productive. Right. Wow, that's a great tip. It's so true. It's it's the action that creates the momentum. Because if you're not moving, you're not doing anything, of course you're not going to feel like doing anything. Yeah. Like you just want to stay doing nothing. This actually yeah. reminds me of something. In, it's like a, a law of physics, actually. I don't know if you've heard of like these Newton law of physics, but it's like an object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest stays at rest. Like it's literally a physical law, a law of physics. So it makes so much sense with motivation is like, just get yourself moving for five minutes and then you'll be you'll be better off. Mm, precisely. And, and I was reading this book. Uh, I guess everybody has read this book, Atomic Habits. And he was saying that you don't have to be 20% better to do something. You just have to aim for 1%. And just just even just aim for 1%. Don't even think about doing 5% or 8%. Just aim for 1% every day. So if it's just five minutes of work that you get to put it and it stops there, then you still got to do five minutes of work instead of nothing. Right. A little bit. Baby steps are better than nothing. Mm, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I do want to talk to you about like your mindset. And I I mean, I want to ask, what do you believe contributed to your success in your life? I know we talked about how success changed for you, but still a lot of people look up to you as like, wow, I want to be like her. How did she achieve that? So let's talk about why and how you believe you got here. (laughs) (laughs) So many factors. I know. Wow. Let's get into it. Oh my goodness. The the hardships, I guess. You know, the first thing that came to my mind are all the difficult things that I went through in life are like divine appointments to make me the woman that I am today. And I just want to encourage a lot of young women, a lot of young people who might be listening to this podcast to 
take into account every hard thing that you've ever went through. Those are things that will eventually fuel you to become the person that you are or the person that God wants you to become. And I'm not saying that to romanticize the pain because I hate it when people romanticize the difficult things that you go through as if they weren't difficult. They are, but you went through them for a reason. I think oftentimes we have this hopelessness in our hearts because we feel like there's no point in me going through all these difficult things, but there is, there is a reason for that. And we take the difficult things that we've gone through and use it to fuel ourselves every single day to become a better person. I think that's an, one of the most important things that has contributed to my success is that I never look at myself as a victim of my circumstances. Although I am going through so much and I have gone through so much, I would never tell myself, you're weak or you went through this thing, you deserve it, you're a victim, you're going to stay there, you're always going to be a victim. No, I tried to figure out a way to become a victor through it all. And I think once you change that disposition, then it changes everything as well. That contributed to my success so much because I wasn't just staying a victim, you know, I'm using it to become a victor. And honestly, I, I feel like I've said it so much already um, in our conversation, becoming successful successful for me started out as just a journey towards helping other people as well. Because I feel like when you're growing and when you're working hard to be successful, oftentimes it's yourself that gets in the way. You you get you get in you get in the way of yourself of achieving great things because you overthink stuff or you become anxious. But I realized that if my focus is on something bigger than myself, then I can keep going every day. It doesn't depend on my comfortability level or on my motivation. It depends on my purpose and on my vision of what I want to be able to contribute and do with my life. So I think it's that. But it's also a lot of the small things every day, you know, it's the small habits that stack up every single day that you have to be mindful mindful of. And when, when, when we talk about success, it's, it's like that. It's always, oh, do you, are you part of the 5 a.m. club? Or do you have all these big projects that you're working on? But I realized it's really not that. Like when I was in my 20s, it was always that for me. I need to have this big project or big thing that I'm doing in my life. Of course, they have their positive impact, but more than that, it's really the small things that I'm doing constantly. Like what kind of conversations am I doing? Am I reading good books? Am I taking time to just be silent and allow my brain to breathe? You know, and and I think it's it's really that. And more than anything, one of the things that we talked about on the podcast as well was being able to redefine success for yourself because I can't do that. I can't tell Eileen what is success to her. I can't tell Kiara what is success to her, but I can tell you what is success to Joyce. And once you're comfortable or courageous enough to do that for yourself, then that's when the success journey really starts. Love it. What would you say to the younger Joyce, like the 18, 19 year old? Don't like, get what that would you haircut. Tell her? <laughs> <laughs> like what advice would you go back to tell your younger self? Oh my, <laughs> don't date that boy. <laughs> get that haircut. <laughs> but at the same time, it was all meant to be, right? Yeah, it led you exactly. to who you are now. Yeah. Um, don't be too hard on yourself. I think it would be that. Don't don't think that whatever you're going through right now is definitive of who you will become as a wife, as a mom, as a career woman in the future. Don't be stuck in friendships or relationships that you know are already toxic for you and for the other person. Do believe in yourself, but also do believe in the people around you and be an encouragement to those people. Show up for yourself every day, even if you don't feel like it. And show up for the people that you love every day, even though you can't even show up for yourself. 
because sometimes showing up for them inspires you to show up for yourself as well. And you have a long way to go. That's what I would tell her. I think when you're in your 20s, especially when you're a woman, you think that life is constantly running out. Yeah, you feel like you have a time limit, right? You're like, I have these 10 years or whatever number of years. Mm, you always feel like that. I don't know why. Maybe it's societal pressure. It's biological clock. Whatever it is, you have time, but it passes by so quickly. So you have to be mindful and present mm -hmm. as much as possible enjoy it. for it all. Yeah, enjoy it. And don't wish it away. I... When, when I gave birth to Aggie, my second, I read this thing that said, don't wish your baby away. Because when they're babies, they're very, very clingy. You can't sleep. They're newborns. Like they need everything from you. And so I found myself like wishing like, oh, I wish he was a toddler already so we can play together. And I read this thing that said, don't wish your baby away because you're going to wish they were back when they're bigger, you're going to wish they were smaller again. There's beauty in the chaos and there's beauty in the season that you're currently in right now. I think the thing that steals our joy and our peace most of the time is thinking that there's something better out there that I should be doing. When in reality, you are right where you're supposed to be. So be in that moment. Gain what you can. Knowledge, experience, heartache. And make it something that works for you to become a better person in the future instead of trying to escape it. Wow. That's a really, really good piece of advice. I love that. Okay. So Joyce, what inspires you now and what are you excited about in your future? So many things. The number one inspiration will have to be my family. Mm -hmm. I I have a daughter now, which changes the game, Eileen. It changes Why? everything. <laughs> Because the way that I present myself in the world will gravely affect her. I know it. The way that I look at my body, if I'm being so critical of my body, the way that I am right now, critical of my face, she's going to be critical of her body and her face as well because that's what she sees mama doing, you know? And I think that gives me so much inspiration to just be more kind to myself because my daughter is going to see that and think, hey, so this is how women are. Women are what? Critical of themselves. Women cannot do all these things. Women are constantly stressed about things because mama is like that. But if I am a more present person, if I am a person that is joyful in her seasons, no matter if it's a good or a bad season, if I am a person that she sees is able to serve her family and love her and be a mother to her that cares for her deeply and shows up for her, but is also capable of creating a career that is fulfilling, then she'll know that it's possible, that it's something that she can do as well, that she can have a beautiful family, a beautiful life, while mm -hmm. at the same time fulfilling career. I think it's that. It's really knowing that someone... Two little people are watching me, knowing that, you know, th this is the kind of woman that they're going up with. That's my number one inspiration. But also it's young women everywhere that would message me sometimes, even young moms. That I think that's the most inspiring thing that I often get on my DMs is young moms who would message me and say, I'm so glad that you posted about working out today because it reminded me that I needed to work out too and it's okay to carve out time for myself. I'm so glad that you're still posting about working, even if you're working from home or shooting from home, because that encourages me that I can still pursue my career while prioritizing my family and homemaking. And I think when we show up for ourselves, that's what happens in the world around us. Other people are encouraged to show up for themselves as well. So that's my inspiration. Wow. I love that. And it's so true. It's like you, you just being the fullest version of yourself inspires other people to do that. Because I, when I've, it's kind of like the people that I follow, it's whatever I see them doing, like they give me permission to do that as well. And I think for women, it's really important because we're learning to navigate like motherhood and trying to have a career and trying to be all these things. And then like, what I love seeing is like, 
women like doing everything they want to do, even as they get older. Like there's no age limit to travel with kids or there's no, there's no limits. And I just, the more you see, the more you like have permission for yourself to do that as well. So, so, so thank you for being one example. (laughs) Wow. Thank you for that. I, I really appreciate that. You know, I think it's also women are just we're just made different. And I'm not saying this to put down men. I love my husband and I have a son. So I think men are wonderful. They're great. They're strong. They have their own strengths as well. But after I became a mom, I was just like, girl, women are super women. Yeah. (laughs) I think that all the time. Like, wow, we can do it all. (laughs) We're amazing. You can literally do it all. The moment, especially when you have kids, if you want kids, Mm -hmm. the moment that you have children, you're like, I am a superhuman. (laughs) <laughs> and this, I can do absolutely anything. Once you pop a baby out, that is your <laughs> signal that I can literally yeah. do anything. Wow. So you And you'll be surprised. Like, it's just, it's an incredible thing to be a woman, to be able to embrace your womanhood, your femininity, to become a woman in this world is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And we can do it all. We really can take seasons. There are different ways to do it. Beautiful life looks different for every woman, but it is possible. It really is. And I love being a woman. I just want to say that. <laughs> Me too. I love it. Yeah. We're in the era of females right now. I think we're just, I, I just love how we are becoming more recognized and we're owning our power and we are owning mm-hmm. that we don't have to do things tr- the conventional way, right? Mm-hmm. We are more gentle with ourselves. We embrace the seasons and, and, and so many other things. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yeah. So do you have any final words that you want to leave with the audience today? Um, Just any final messages of whether it's lessons you want to share or any thoughts? First, I want to say thank you for having me. I I've I've said this to you before when you guessed it on the podcast and even offline that I absolutely love your content. When we were talking about shedding your light and showing up encourages other people to do the same, you are that for me Aww. and for a lot of girls around the world. So thank you for what you do and thank you for having me here on your podcast. You're an absolute inspiration and I'm so glad to be here. Um, I want to talk to all the ladies who are listening to the podcast right now, I feel like I've said it already, but I just want to reiterate that you can have the most beautiful life that you desire in your heart. It takes a while. It is a long journey. It may have its ups and downs. You're going to go through valleys and troughs. But the thing is, if you keep on going, things just keeps getting better. Just keep getting better. And It's so important to keep your purpose clear in your head because when things are tough and we, when you feel lost, that's the most important thing that you have to look back on the purpose that you have for your life, the purpose that God has put in your life. And I encourage you to just constantly look at that when things are getting rough and when things are even beautiful and it feels like it's never going to end. Just always look at your purpose and help a girl along the way, help somebody else along the way. It's a journey that's beautiful, but it's only made even more beautiful when you help other people along the way. So there. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Joyce. Thank you for being an inspiration for so many women, so many people out there. I am honored that you are on the podcast and I'm so grateful that we got to connect and do this podcast swap sort of thing. And I am truly inspired by what you shared today. One last question. Where can we find you online? My goodness. <laughs> I get to promote on your podcast. Of course. I can't believe it. <laughs> um, you can check me out. Uh, my website is joyspring.com and on Instagram at joyspring on all my socials. It's at joyspring. And we're actually doing, well, it's workshops in the Philippines. So I don't know if anybody's listening here. I'm sure there we are a lot of We do have people. listeners in the Philippines. Yes. Yeah. We had so many people comment that they were fans of yours on the podcast. Aww. So if you're listening to this, we're doing workshops on self-development, content creation, and so many other things at Dallas Life Academy soon, in-person workshops. So please do check that out. Thank you again, Eileen, for having me here on your podcast. Thank you so much. 